Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to explore the an idea that I refer to quite a bit, and it may need some further explanation and uh, clarification in order to really make best use of it. And the idea is that we are generating or creating energy by holding poles in opposition. So what exactly that means and and how that all fits into uh, you know the the Chinese internal martial arts, Qigong, and general living uh, as well. So getting that uh, getting an idea of what that what that means. And also last time uh, two weeks ago we were talking about energetic coherence and how that fits in with this idea. So one thing is to increase the amplitude or the amount of chi present. The other is to organize in such a way that it is uh, most beneficial. So that's where the energetic coherence comes in. So the uh, the idea is that starting like getting real wonky just to start, just to kind of establish a framework, and that is that the any form that we take, including a human body, requires energy to keep it in place. So that is your it for their for things to stick together to become coherent, it requires a certain amount of energy. So there's sort of like a, a default setting uh, on, on the energy field. And um, if there is insufficient energy, then things tend to fall apart. If there's too much energy, things get kind of burn up. And there's, so you, you have to find a sweet spot there of what's the appropriate energy for the situation and what kind of energy is it? Is it a, is it a restful yin energy? Is it a, uh, an expansive yang energy? And so getting that, uh, an awareness of the energy, being able to interpret the energy, be able to understand uh, its place in your in your life and in your kung fu is is real important. So just to understand the um, you know the, this concept. Actually, let me tell you uh, where where the the epiphany came from. Me was like a long time ago when I was studying uh, Xing Yi, uh, Xing Yi Chuan with uh, uh, Master Yang Fu Kui. And there's a posture in Xing Yi called the San Ti Shi. I'll, I'll show you what, what it looks like briefly. Just it's it's this posture here. You're standing like this. Your weight's about sixty percent in your back foot and thirty percent or forty percent in your front foot. And you're you're standing like this. And and that is the foundation of energy training for Xing Yi Chuan. And uh, the term San Ti. Uh, refers to uh, Santisha, it means like three uh, uh, three pillars uh, uh, or three something. Uh, anyway, it basically refers to heaven, earth, and man. So there's there's three elements there that are uh, that are to uh, brought into into uh, they're they're integrated heaven, earth, and man. So you're you're getting the the earth chi and the heaven chi, the yin chi of the earth, the heaven chi, and then you're integrated it through your body. Anyway, so I have been doing this quite a while as we were studying, and and because it was supposed to be something you did, you did the standing posture for for a um, you know, and I mean when they're training it, you know, the ancient way you you train that, just do that for like for six months or a year. And then if you know the teacher came along and broke a broke a board across your back without you moving, then you're ready to move on. But we don't didn't quite do it that way. But the the thing that what that stood out was like after a, a, quite a few months of, of of practicing this, I wasn't getting anything really significant from that. And um, I asked Master Young about like what's going on there, and he says the chi must fight. And I said, what? He said, the chi must fight. 
And this was something that was completely out of left field for me because up to that point, everything I'd been training with, all my teachers said like, you must relax. That was the only thing that was important was you must relax even more. And so that's kind of the the the, the highest level of uh, of understanding that I had up to that point it was like, oh, as long as I relax, then eventually the energy is going to come. No, apparently I was missing a key element there, which is the chi must fight. And that is the chi must, there must be this oppositional uh, element there in your energy that creates a flow. Otherwise, things just tend to, to dissipate. They tend to just go away. And uh, this was, this was a, um, you know, kind of a, kind of a heresy at the time, but it was like, okay, let's try it. And I, I tried it and it worked. And then suddenly I came across different things in my readings, like, you know, the chi must be excited and excitable, that you must vibrate the energy, stuff like that. From the, from the classics, it's like, oh, okay. So I kind of skipped over all that and just was focusing on this relaxation thing. So the um, um, little show and tell here, the, I uh, got a toy bow here. And the, uh, if we're going to generate energy using this bow, well, first of all, there is, in the strung bow, there is a certain amount of energy in the system. This is kind of like your body. There's a default level of energy. That is, the bow had to be bent and this string attached so that the it it has its current form in order for it to have this shape it needs a certain amount of energy that is a certain amount of effort had to be put into this to to bend the bow and attach the string and so now there is stored energy in this system the same thing happens in your body there is stored energy when you get you know tens of trillions of cells together to cooperate you it requires a certain level of chi in order just to make that happen that's your default setting if you can increase the efficiency of that that and cooperation amongst the cells a little bit then you become a bit more coherent and then you are then able to to do things a little bit better but anyway so if I want to use this bow, I have to go beyond the default setting. So in a sense, this bow is relaxed. That is, it is it has settled into its default energy state. That is, it's bent here. If I take the string off, then it straightens out and it's even more relaxed, but it's useless as a bow at that point. This way, it's, it, it is a bow in potentia. It is ready to, it's ready to do something with. Now, in order to use this bow as to do bow things with it, i.e. shoot arrows, I need to, I need to distort the bow. That is, I need to, to have this pole and this pole, these two poles in opposition. I pull them apart and that deforms the bow and it makes it bend. So in that deformation, I've, I've changed the shape, changed the structure of the bow in order to create energy. This requires, you know, a certain amount of effort. Now, if it were like an old English uh, longbow, you know, this is, this is nothing to pull this back, but those, the, that old English longbow would be between 80 and 130 pounds of, of effort in order to pull the bowstring back and in order to shoot, you know, what, you know, 10 of those a minute or something, uh, it would take a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of muscle power to make that happen. So in order to create that energy, in order to propel the, the, the missile to do the work of the bow, I need to have these poles in opposition. As I'm pulling them apart, I'm creating 
they are fighting between the two. The same thing happens in your body whenever you are creating energy. Now, ordinarily, we create it on a very gross physical level. That is, we use muscular contraction to push against things and to create this, this energetic uh, push-pull within our own body. So usually whenever you're pushing out, you're also pulling back. You're pushing out with your triceps. You're pulling back with your biceps. And this creates this, this energy within the system. And we recognize that. And so whenever we, the system is stressed, whenever we get, we're in a situation where we need, uh, we need to summon our might and main, we tend to tense up because that is what the body mind remembers as the right way to do it. However, in Tai Chi Tran, in other internal martial arts, we're saying, no, we don't want to do it that way. But we want to, uh, we want to use less muscular effort and more a, a, the efficient energy of the, of the system to, to make it work. So the way I trained for a long time was just kind of like, okay, that's the top of the mountain. I want to go to the top of the mountain, just do it that way. It doesn't work that way. In order to get to the top of the mountain, you actually got to, got to do the effort. You got to put in the work. You need to actually feel that resistance and gradually let go of it. And it's something, an exercise that we've done before, but, but we can do it again right now, just uh, in this context. And so if you just bring your arms out in front of you like this and push your hands against each other, like an isometric exercise, you're pushing your hands against each other and just hold that and just notice that it's taking you, it's requiring a certain amount of effort and energy expenditure to make this happen. So you're, you're doing that and the body will, will alert you like, hey, this is this is a lot of work, Rick. How about we relax now? And so you say, okay, I'm gonna let that go. And you let that go. So the energy dissipates. We generated energy, we generated a chi flow by holding that together and then, ah, oh, we let it go. We're relaxing now and that, the energy just floats away. It follows the path of least resistance and it, and it dissipates. What we're trying to do is create structures where when the energy follows the path of least resistance, it's going where we want it to go. That is, we create these structures so that we can, first of all, generate some energy, and second of all, direct it and move it in a direction that we want it to go. So back to this idea. So this time, bring your hands out like this, only this time, don't push with your muscles, but use your intention to push your hands together using, you know, maybe just a, a tenth of the amount of pressure you were before. So we're doing much less physical work, but we are using that intention to hold those poles, to have those pose, poles oppose each other, and we're generating a chi flow by doing that. Now let that go and relax and let and let the energy just dissipate. Now we're going to go back and put your arms out and, and separate your hands. And this time you're going to push them together, but without moving. So this time you're going to activate your intention. You're going to be making an effort to push them together but you're not going to actually physically move them. And so here we're creating a chi flow with a minimum of muscular effort. We're creating a structure that allows this energy to flow between the hands without, um, without using a whole lot of physical force. And we're going to let that go. So when we're developing Jin, J-I-N, that, that's where we express energy through the body. And 
chin always has a certain amount of lee, which is crude muscular force. There, so there's always a certain amount of lee with with the jin. It's actually it's in the it's in the word itself in the in the in the Chinese character that it's this combination of qi and li that creates jin. And so we it's a the question is in the circumstances you're in, in the context that you're applying this, what is the appropriate amount of muscular tension, muscular force that is appropriate for that for that situation? So I can stand here and I can just say, okay, I'm gonna feel those those holes between my hands. I'm gonna push them together and I'm gonna feel the feel the energy there, feel the chi ball that that comes up between the two hands. And that's really cool. And it's really good for what I'm doing here in this context as a meditation. It's like here's a little chi meditation. Okay. And that's really good. And it it's a, a training tool that enables me to become more and more familiar with the idea of creating chi by holding poles in opposition. But if I in the if I shift the context and say, okay, now I'm going to use this to play push hands, and I want to to uproot somebody with this. Is that enough to do that in that context? Or do I need to crank up the lead part, the uh, the physical part a little more in order to make that happen? So as we uh, as we become more and more conversant with this, the insubstantiality of the of the jinn, then we it becomes more and more available to us as a tool that even under stressful conditions, even with a, a good deal of resistance that we're facing, we can become more and more uh, dependable. It becomes more and more of a dependable thing to be able just to to effortlessly move. And that's where we get into a level of mastery. But we don't get there by going there first. We don't get there by just relaxing and saying, oh, okay, now I have my gin. It doesn't work that way. It works by gradually increasing your ability to meet a resistance with a minimum of of mus no extraneous muscular tension, no more than it's necessary to get the job done. And as you practice it, you'll get more and more familiar with what that actually means. So uh, how this applies to what we're doing is, is that in various exercises, I'm going to want you to, to feel those poles in opposition. and in certain cases, it'll be like you'll be reaching forward with your hands and pulling back with your body. And that will create that those two poles in opposition there. And or you're going to pull back with your hands and forward with the body. And that creates that. So the uh, the practice of each one is um, is where this really is emphasized, this type of uh, of energy gin cultivation um happens by doing these these exercises which uh move in that direction so before we go forward uh, i'd like to know if there are any questions comments corrections disagreements anything richard um as as you were talking and we were doing the difference between creating muscular tension like this then I realized that what we were now doing was creating energetic tension. Yes. So we are very familiar with using the muscular tension. Right. And what we need to learn is how to use this. Because when we did this, I had a, a strong feeling of energetic tension. So right. I'm thinking to myself now, if I could just learn to use to create that kind of tension and then use it, uh, right. I'm on the path. Yeah. That's right. And uh, muscular tension, you know, is is a term which has uh, 
generally a, a, a bad connotation in Taiji Tran circles because it it usually refers to um, a uh, a confused way of using your your physicality, and that's why we particularly with beginners we talk about relax. You want to you want to just kind of let go of a lot of that stuff just so you can have the experience of of not tensing up it uh you know, whenever the uh whenever you're at, when you're doing anything you you know there's a tendency to to tense up just to move in in any way and so learning how to just not do that is a good first step and it's not not a wrong thing to teach beginners but after a certain point and you start to say oh well, what else is possible here? Then you have to go beyond the idea of just relaxing. And we have to get beyond just the idea that that is going to get the job done for us and realize that we are creating these poles in opposition using our minds. The mind is saying, this is different than this, and they are fighting. And by, and it's it's a, a a different kind of concept. So the to have the energy fight and while you yourself remain calm is is where the is how we make this all work. If we if we have the energy fighting and you get interbulated as well, then you you missed it. You missed the point. You need to be able to uh, calm your stuff down and have the energy cranked up to in order to make it work. Jonathan, is there make a comparison or a contrast to just like breathing? I mean, you could say inhaling and exhaling are fighting with each other. I want the breath to go in. I want the breath to go out. You know, it's like they're in opposition in that way. So um, it's a funny kind of fight, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, breathing is a good thing because that you if you want to generate energy with your with your breath, you you're not just relaxing your breath you are you are breathing you are as you're inhaling you're pushing down with your diaphragm and it's meeting the resistance of your internal organs so we have these poles in opposition there you're pushing down on the diaphragm and it's it's it's, it's meeting resistance and that is creating a, a positive energetic uh, flow and that stimulates your sympathetic nervous system and then as you exhale you're releasing that tension and you're going into your parasympathetic nervous system and you're doing this little back and forth yin and yang kind of dance with that and that creates this bellows which creates the uh cr creates the energy flow and the opportunity for the calmest center you might be able to even generate in this lifetime right in terms of i mean meditation has been using that for years uh, I like your description very much, but and it, it, I like the calm that comes from increase the opposition and you can increase the calm. I like that. That's very good. So it's one of those those lovely Taiji paradoxes <laughs> that <laughs> that <laughs> get calmer by fighting. You know, right. <laughs> it's right. like that's very good. That's very good. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and uh, but it's it goes the. Uh, yeah, it runs counter to that earlier mindset that I had, which is everything has to move in the direction of relaxation. Right. Doesn't get you to the promised land. You know, it just moves that you're moving more and more toward entropy as you do that. You're kind of, oh, you're you're getting more relaxed, and that's that's fine, but it's just like energy is dis dissipating. You're not you're not pulling the bowstring back. You look like you have something there, Nick. Did you have... Well, yeah, actually I do. I'm thinking about this whole notion of uh, what you're talking about with the breath because breathing is a, a sequence, a linear sequence, if you will. Whereas if you're standing in Santee or doing any of the other postures, you're both expanding and contracting or moving... It's simultaneously you're doing them at the same time there's no it doesn't have a linear component like the breathing and i'm just kind of puzzling over that uh you're right so and that's one of the things that um 
we're not to get too deep into that into the into the weeds here, but the we have entropy, which is the tendency of energy to dissipate and things to fall apart, and we have syntropy or negentropy, which is the tendency of life to pull things together. But it does that by creating more complexity. Life creates complexity in order to store energy within a uh, a system, and that just like our our bow there, we we are storing energy in that bow, and its usefulness as a bow is dependent on that stored energy. And then we amplify that by pulling the bowstring back, and we create even more of a of a, of a tree. But that requires more energy going into the system. We have to deform the bow in order to make that happen. Okay, anybody else? Great, thank you. Okay, let's uh, let's stand up and uh, do some uh, do some e-tran. All right, let's start off and with our three pillars. So we want to feel the central equilibrium. So feel the, the weight centering over the balls of the feet. Knees are unlocked. And feel yourself ah, sinking down into the earth, releasing downward. So you're relaxing that, that tendency to push away from the earth and simultaneously reach up with the crown of your head. Tuck in the chin. And so we're creating this, these poles in opposition by reaching with the crown and sinking down into the earth simultaneously. So the body is stretching, lengthening in two different directions here. The spine is getting longer as we do that. We open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull so the energy flows more freely into the brain. So just notice the chi that's getting generated just by holding those poles in opposition. And this is not just the energy of your own physical body. You're, by doing this, you're tapping into the big chi. We're connecting up to the energy of the earth and the sky. We're doing our own little santee here and that we are doing heaven, earth, and man. We're doing, you know, the body is acts as the intermediary between the two. And the energy is amplifying in the system. We're we're cranking up the chi by creating this, this flow. We're, we're um, holding these poles in opposition and therefore increasing the amplitude. Now feel your index fingers, reach with them, feel them. And doing this enhances the coherence of the system. So we're getting the energetic coherence there as well. So the energy is not only amplifying, but it's also getting more coherent. Uh, reach with your elbows and open the shoulder joints. And open the hip joints, the quad, by just gently turning, releasing your hip joints. Relax your lower back and kind of sit down. So just feel into that. And just feel the amplification of the chi in the body right now. So this is the equivalent of uh, putting the string on the bow, where basically we bent the bow enough so that we can have our default setting here. Now, reach with your wrists. You can do balls of your feet, reach with the wrists. Fingers are hanging. 
Now reach with the fingers and open between your shoulder blades, open the shoulder joints, the elbows, the wrists, the fingers. Feel that extending outward. At the same time, pull back with your body. So you're moving, your, you're opposing your hands and your body as you do this. Now pull back with your hands and forward with your body. So you're, as if you're grabbing the space in front of you and pulling back and your body is going forward as your hands come back. So you're getting the opposition there. Now go ahead and do, sink into your heels and reach out and open. Body goes back, hands go forward. Feel that expansion there. Think of the balls of your feet and pull back with the fingers. Reach back with the elbows, body comes forward. Now rotate your palms so they're facing you. And without moving, push forward with your, with your hands and pull back with your body. Don't move, but just get that feeling of that op those poles in opposition there. Continue to sink into your feet into the earth, continue to reach up with the crown of your head. Now pull back with your hands, body comes forward without moving. Now push out and body comes back without moving. So just that feeling of that. So what we're, what we're registering right now is the intention the intention to do these things, which is generating a uh, uh, the energy necessary to make this happen. So in the uh, you know in, in Taiji we talk about mobilize the chi, then move. So this is how we mobilize the chi. That is, we get so familiar with cranking up the chi first. So that the then when the movements are made, they're made seemingly effortlessly at that point, because the chi has as we've generated so much of that that it the body is just sort of expressing the intent with very little actual physical effort on your part. But we first we started by feeling the resistance. Uh, rotate the palms, sink into your heels, and press down. Okay. Still reaching with the crown of your head, but everything else is going down, 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 very, very soon. Just feel into that. Now feel into the yin of this. We're sinking into the earth as we're doing this. So we've created an imbalance here. We've created a, a yin. Uh, the yin is exaggerated and the yang is, is sedated at the, in, in this moment. We've gone from that yang expression into a very yin one right now. So we're looking to create chi also by creating imbalances in the body. So the, the, there's a dynamic balance that occurs when the yin and the yang, but it's always changing. So sink into your left leg and 
very small step with the right on a 45. And now sink into your right leg. And as you reach out with your hands, sink back into your left leg, into your back leg. You're reaching forward and pulling back. You reach out, feel that expansion there. Sink into your right leg, your front leg, and pull back with your hands, forward with your body. Now sink into your back leg and reach out. Feel those poles in opposition. Feel that extension, that yang extension. Sink into your right leg, your front leg, and reach. Sink into your back leg and reach. Hands come down. Step in, turn. Step out with your left foot. And reach. Sink into your back leg as you reach forward. Pull back as your body goes forward. Into the left leg. Into your left leg and your right leg and reach out. Open and hold that. Feel those poles in opposition. Open the shoulders. Reach with the fingers, the elbows. Everything opens. Hands come down. Step in. Turn, step with the right foot, and reach. Sink into your left leg as you reach out. Now, as you sink into your right leg, Push down with your hands and come up with your body. Now sink into your left leg, your back leg, and your hands come up. Your body goes back and reaches out. Sink into the front leg, hands come down, body comes up. Back leg. Body sinks. Hands come up. Reaches out. Front leg. Hands come down. Body comes up. Back leg. Hands come up. Body goes down. Sink. Reaching out. And hold that. Let's come down. Step in. Turn. Step with the left foot. Reach out. Sink into your back leg, your right leg. Feel those pulls in opposition. Into the 
front leg, hands come down, body comes up. Think of the back leg, body goes back, hands come up, sink, reach. Front leg, hands down, body up. Back leg, hands up, reach. Leg, hands down. Body up, back leg, hands up, sink, reach, and hold that, feel those pulls in opposition. Come down, step in, and step. So flat of shoulder width. You reach with your wrists. Pull your hands apart. Feel those pulls in oppositions. As if you're stretching something, stretching a big rubber band or something. Sink as you reach out. Rotate your hands, palms, and bring your hands together. Feel the poles in opposition as they push against each other. Feel yourself squeezing the space in front of you. Hold that. Just feel the chi being generated, the chi ball being generated between your hands. Rotate the palms. And the palms down. Think of your heels. Reach out with your elbows. Spread your fingers. Feel your hands filling up. Reach with the crown of your head. Feel centers of your feet. Feel the bubbling well, the earth chi, the yin chi of the earth. Let's do the bubbling well points. Feel your, the tissues in your arms unwinding. Feel the, the reorganizing. Feel the energy, feel the, uh, the blood circulating in your arms. Feel into your bone marrow. Feel the electricity that's being generated in your bone marrow. 
enlivening all the blood cells that are circulating through your body. Step in. Rotate your palms forward. Sink into your heels. Allow yourself to feel the yin as the energy circulates, goes down, returns to the earth. Take a deep breath. Inhale and the balls of your feet. Yang, yang expansion. Give you a big. And sink into your heels and yin. Let it go. Feel everything, the energy just flowing out of you. Emptying out. Allow yourself to become more like like vapor, like a cloud. Tune into the insubstantiality that pervades your your whole body mind. Take a seat. Mm -hmm. ah, how'd that go? Good, good. Excellent. So, Sharon. Um, I had an interesting sensation, which I haven't had before. Um, when we had our, um, I guess it was both all the times when we were standing and reaching forward and then with our bodies back or vice versa, I always kept my heels planted on the floor. I didn't raise up at all um, for the rear foot. And what I was feeling was like my foot was floating, but also anchored at the same time. Wow. That's pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm. So, uh, anybody else? Anything else you can uh, share with the the folks at home? No. <laughs> yes. No. no, it felt great. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I really had a lot of uh, of that sort of little. <clears throat> uh energy circling over the top of the head the back of the the head the crown of the head just really floating up there even while feeling grounded so that was so you were polishing your halo was, i don't <laughs> need to polish my halo are you kidding it's always there you know <laughs> great okay uh uh, you had something, Scott? Um, yeah, I mean, as Lynn said, it felt really good. Um, I was able to really just be there and let go of the tension, and it really, the energy just really built. And when you had us take our hands apart and together at the end, it was like we froze in molasses or something. I could barely, you know, it was so much. Nice. 
It was really cool. Excellent. It hasn't stopped yet. Oh no. It hasn't stopped. No, I'm Good. high. The um, you know reason why I go go through a lot of that wonky stuff at the beginning is I want you to get the idea, I want everybody to get the idea that that this is something that you can do anytime, any place. You know, once you understand the how the alchemy works, then you don't need any special equipment, no special occasion, nothing to to make it it anytime, any place. You can you can just create your own batch of chi there that uh, that you can then throw away because it's a, an infinitely renewable resource as long as you've got the mind to be able to create it, as long as you can put the intention out there and clear the noise for a moment, then you have this, this vast resource that is available to you anytime, any place, and which is kind of fun. So, you know, as Jonathan's mentioned many times, like you're sitting there watching TV and you're, you're, playing with you know your elbows or your your chi ball or whatever it's like you can you can do this it doesn't it doesn't require a special invitation in order to make it happen so thank you all so much it's been great thank you maria thank you thank you, maria. Thank you, maria. Thank you all see you guys bye bye